Oh my goodness, you guys, it smells so good in here right now. It smells exactly like your home should smell, like you really want it to smell during the holidays. And that is because I'm making my holiday breakfast cookies and they are chock full of all kinds of holiday aromatic goodness. And, um, and they're breakfast cookies for goodness sakes. Who doesn't want a cookie for breakfast? Well, let me show you how to make them. I'll just start off right away with some whole wheat flour, one cup of whole wheat flour. And I always post the recipe on my website and there's a link to it as well. So look for that. Um, okay, a cup of whole wheat flour, then a teaspoon of baking powder. And then come all of the amazing spices. Let's see, I got a, one and a half teaspoons of um, cinnamon ground cinnamon of course immediately you get that i think cinnamon is literally aromatherapy i think all of the spices in this are aromatherapy so about one and a half teaspoons a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves and oh boy that just right away sort of brings holiday to mind a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger so we got really basically all those pumpkin spice spices right there and a quarter teaspoon of salt and i'm just going to whisk that together so that's really the essence of pumpkin spice and some pumpkin goes in here too so i could technically maybe even call these pumpkin spice cookies but they have lots more holiday elements in them and they're good for you too so got the whole grain in there so i just whisk that together to combine and then I'll get the wet ingredients together. And that starts with some pumpkin. And this is a great way to use leftover pumpkin. So it's about a third of a cup of just pumpkin puree. I always have pretty much a can of pumpkin opened up this time of year. I put some in my oatmeal in the morning. Uh, I make these cookies. There's a million and one things you can do with that pumpkin puree. Put it in smoothies. I love a good pumpkin pie smoothie. Um, also in here, a uh, third of a cup of olive oil. So healthy fat going in these cookies. And they're lightly sweetened, so not super sweet, but I'm using some maple syrup. So I, this is a good trick, by the way. If you have oil and maple syrup or honey in the same recipe, do the oil first, and then you can use the same cup for the maple syrup, and it'll slide out easily. So I'm just doing a quarter cup of maple syrup and that gives it a beautiful depth of flavor as well. And then a quarter cup of dark brown sugar. Come on out, you. Right in there. And an egg. So also, whenever I'm using an egg in a recipe, I crack it first into a little bowl. This way, if you get any shell in there by accident, it's just easier to fish it out as opposed to going through the whole batch that you have and potentially ruining it. So one egg in there. And that's the, oh, teaspoon of vanilla, also aromatherapy and kind of brings up that sweetness, just like a sweet enhancer, essentially. And I'm going to whisk that together. So we have the dry and the wet. And you get the aroma just from making them, even before they get in the oven. And then once they're in the oven, oh my gosh, just doesn't get better. You just can't find a scented candle as good as this, trust me. There's a couple little sugar lumps in there, but that's okay, that'll melt. I'm taking this one out, actually, that's a big one. Okay. It happens, what are you gonna do? Okay, so then I'm just going to put the dry ingredients into the wet. So what's fun about these is they actually come out kind of like a muffin top, which is the best part of the muffin everyone knows. And sometimes people use like a special pan to make muffin top muffins, but this is, uh, kind of a cheaty way to do it. It's a cookie, 
definitely feels like a cookie, but kind of a muffin top cookie, if that makes sense. But you'll see, it's all this good, all the good stuff's about to come, actually. And this lovely mixture essentially just binds it all together. Okay, just making sure all that's integrated, but you don't want to overmix it. Any batter, really, you don't want to overmix. Just making sure there's no spots of um, flour. Okay, that's set. Now for the goodies. All right, so we got some cranberries, so about a cup of cranberries, which I cut in half. If they're big, I cut them in half. If they're small, you can leave them whole. But I don't want a huge chunk of cranberry in each, in when I'm biting into it. I like them to be a little more dispersed, so I cut them in half. And you can use frozen here. If you're using frozen, just keep them frozen. You don't even need to thaw them. So immediately you have that gorgeous color. I'm using one apple, uh, a golden delicious apple. I leave the skin on. It gives you more nutrition and fiber that way. But with the golden delicious in particular, the skin's really tender. So that's why I'm using that variety. You could use any variety apple you want. You could peel it if you want. Um, just getting that in there. So you see this really kind of adds up to a lot. Also to add a little sweetness in a, a whole food kind of way, I'm putting in some chopped dates. You could also put raisins in here if you want. And you don't even have to chop those, but a third of a cup. A cup of oats. So look at all this good stuff going in here. You're wondering like, oh my God, how's, how's that gonna come together? Wait till you see. Then a cup of nuts. I'm using uh, walnuts here. You could use pecans. You could use a mix of nuts. And by the way, I toasted these first. So I have my oven at 350 because these bake at 350. And I just put them in the oven for about six minutes to toast up. Get that out of the way and then just stir this up and you'll see it's really really a lot of goodies that you're gonna get in here it almost right now has the look of a oatmeal cookie in a way but don't forget you have all those wonderful spices in there I'm gonna get this clean this up a bit you have all those great spices in there and is just really loosely held together by this batter. All this kind of kitchen sink goodness, holiday kitchen sink goodness. And it really is a great way to use up leftovers. If you have leftover cranberries from Thanksgiving. Okay. And who wouldn't want one of these with a nice latte in the morning? Come on. Okay. So let me show you how this works. Then I just get a baking sheet ready with some parchment on it. And then I just use like a half cup ice cream scoop to scoop them. And they come out really big and nice like that. And it makes about 10 and you can actually freeze them, which is nice. And they don't have to be super far apart because they don't really spread much at all. Like I said, they wind up looking, and I'll show you because I have some that are done, they wind up looking kind of like muffin tops. And you know all the whole grain goodness and the whole fruit that's in here. They're l very uh, low in sugar overall, as cookies go, of course. So it's perfect for breakfast and a special breakfast for sure. And one where you want people to wake up and say, ooh, what is that smell? It smells so good. So you can definitely freeze them. The last at room temperature for a few days, the last in the fridge. But if you freeze them, you can really have them anytime. So let me, I'll finish this later, but I really want to show you how they come together. But you get the idea. So once they bake up, you just let them cool and look how they come out. They're kind of like muffin tops. They're just kind of barely held together with that wonderful aromatic pumpkin spice uh, binder, essentially. And don't forget, there's the cranberries and the fresh apples. Mmm, they're tender, nutty. You will love them. Happy holidays to everybody. I hope you make the cookies.